folks welcome back this is Joel and in this video we will look at uh, you know ice and the wireless network right so we have talked about ice with wired networks uh, in my ice series but I've been getting a bunch of comments where people are asking me uh, if I can make a quick video on how do how do you provision a wireless network right for probably a small office or a building and then how do you do the whole uh, you know, how do you make your life easier integrating it with ICE and you know, uh, the whole basically whole uh, wireless provisioning, right? So uh, I've actually already set up the lab and you know, the uh, the configuration, the policies, everything is up. So I'm gonna take you through it in this video rather than configuring it because configuring it would take a lot of time. So I'll probably take you through the whole flow and uh, we'll try to look at this, right? Cool. That being said, what do we have in my lab? A uh, very simple switch, right? I have a Cat 9K switch. You can use any switch. Technically, you can use even a, uh, you know, Cat 3K or any uh, older switches, right? Uh, so I, uh, this is, yeah, just a disclaimer. I'm not doing this on Eve. Uh, you can actually technically do this on Eve as well. Uh, but um, I'm using a physical gear here, so I'm gonna, I'm using it. I'm doing it actually in a lab, right? So I have a switch here, uh, a Cat 9K switch. And I have an access point, access point which is a 4800 access point, right? So if I may write it here for reference. So this is the 4800 access point which I'm using. Okay, and then uh, like I said, the switch is a cat link switch. Uh, this is a trunk link right between the switch and the access point because we really need uh, uh, multiple VLANs here for different SSIDs, right? Let's actually quickly have a look at the uh, uh, configuration of these two links, right? Because the switch is connected to the AP via a trunk link and the switch is then connected to the data center which is nothing but a UCS box again we're using a trunk link so let's quickly have a look at that config we should be here yeah so this is my switch so if I go to show run interface gig 1012 I think it should do it yeah there you go so that's my access point and you can see my native VLAN is 2060 uh, and uh, this is basically what I'm using so I have um, I have uh, 1030 as my VLAN for what? For my uh, corporate SSID, right? You know, SSID, I'm not gonna uh, dwell uh, very much deeper into the wireless section because, you know, uh, that's a complete different, uh, you know, discussion, uh, but just the stuff which is really needed for our, you know, uh, lab here, right? So 1030, this VLAN is the SSID, um, the corporate SSID, right? And the 1070 is the guest SSID. Right, forget about 1090. 90 is basically a quarantine VLAN which I'm playing around with, and 2060 is basically the um, uh, native VLAN and also the management uh, VLAN. Right, so but the most important is these both, right? Uh, 1030 and 1070, which we are going to use. So that's the um, link which is connecting to the access point. Right, let's also look at the other trunk port which is connecting uh, uplinked up to the data center. Which is I'm just calling it data center, but it's actually just my UCS care, right. So if I do, I think that's basically 1024. Yeah, there it goes, right? So that's another simple uh, trunk link, right? You have a trunk link and uh, these are all the various VLANs. Um, again, these are a bunch of extra VLANs which I'm playing around with some other things in my lab. So the ones which are going to concern you is 1030 and 1070, right? So those are enabled here and obviously the management VLAN 2060 as well, right? Cool, so that's mainly uh, the configuration on the switch guys, nothing very complicated because with respect to wireless, there is nothing else which happens here, right? It basically, um, the, the switch basically gives power it's because it, this access point is a PoE based, so it basically gives power to your uh, access point and once the access point comes up, right, it will come up in this particular, uh, um, on this interface. And depending on what ICE uh, uh, is configured, right? So depending on that, you either get the VLAN 1030 or you get VLAN 1070, right? So uh, depending on which VLAN, uh, depending on the policy which has been configured on the WLC actually, for that particular SSID, you either get 1030 or 1070, right? So once you get uh, that particular VLAN, then obviously the DS, okay, so maybe let's look at the SVI. Show run interface VLAN uh, 1030. So this is what happens once the client connects to uh, one of the um, you know corporate SSID. Uh, the next is this is the SVI right to which it connects to and uh, uh, or it basically this is the VLAN in which that particular client is put in right and the very next thing which has to happen is the DHCP. So there you go. That's the DHCP part. So these are the DHCP servers to which uh, you know it will uh, uh, 
um, connect to and try to you know do the whole Dora process until it gets an IP, right? And uh, uh, then obviously you're inside the network. So that is basically your uh, wireless uh, WLAN or you know SSI. That's how it works, right? And uh, with your um, other one, which is 1070, which is the guest VLAN, there's a slight uh, difference, obviously, right? Uh, not with the not with this section. This will still remain the same. But there is a slight difference with respect to how the ICE is configured. So we'll look at that as well, right? But I think that I just wanted to quickly show you what's happening on the switch side so that you know you don't you are not left in the dark. This is literally what is, you know, it's very pretty straightforward on the switch side. Okay. So we are good on the switch. So what has happened now? Our um, AP has been brought up, right? Again, maybe let me spend a couple of minutes on the AP as well, right? Because if you guys are very much new to um, wireless and if you are not very sure on how to proceed. I'll quickly give you an idea. So for this lab, obviously you want an AP, you want a WLC, right? The AP has to be physical hardware because you know, you don't have, you can't virtualize APs, but the WLC can be obviously a virtual WLC, no issue there, right? So <clears throat> let's first go and look at the version of the WLC which we are running, okay? Before that, uh, if I go back to my diagram, uh, this is my uh, data center and I also have a jump host here Right, and using that jump host, I'm able to connect to any of these, um, you know, um, uh, any of these uh, VMs basically, right? So let's go to my jump host. My jump host is here. There you go. And <coughs> yeah, so that's good. Uh, that's my jump host. Let me okay, give me one sec. Yeah, okay. So let's go back to the jump host. Uh, where is it? I think it's here. Yeah, so that's my jump host, and this is my WLC, right? So again, installing WLC and all of that is probably not uh, part of this video. It's just something, you know, you can, it's pretty easy to install, right? It's just a VM. You just go on to your vCenter and you uh, deploy it. Um, and obviously you've got to put some management IP address for your WLC. In my case, it is 1020.60.33. Uh, things to be noted down here is the software version, right? You see the version of this WLC, it is 80.10.130.0, which means if I go back to my documentation, let's go to my documentation here right so i have pulled out this documentation which says uh, let's look at the give me a second ah my bad okay so let's look at the documentation here um, it basically tells uh, this is cisco um, you know uh, solution software compatibility matrix you can see the path here right it's basically a wlc and ap compatibility matrix right so if you scroll down here this is all the latest aps and wlcs which we are not using uh, if you haven't explored, go, go check out Cisco's, you know, embedded WLCs, right? The latest one, which are based on, which is basically 9800, right? Based on your iOS XE. But we are using the older WLC, which is the AOS one, which is over here, right? This one. Now, if you see the version which I showed you earlier, it was 8.10.130. This was the version, right? And uh, the AP which we are using is the 4800 AP. So if you see here the matching for this particular AP and for this particular version of WLC, the access point really should be this one, 1533 JK3. So what you have to do is you have to go to your software, Cisco, you know, software central, right? Click on software download and this gives you that page. Search for 4800, right? And click on the uh, lightweight AP, you know, software, which is 1533 JK3, right? You have to just take this one and you have to use the you know, using console or using a USB drive. You should be able to upload this software into the AP and then clear any existing configuration. If the AP has, you know, any old configuration, repeat, uh, reset it, do a factory reset. And when the AP comes up, it will come up with this new software, new uh, lightweight access point software, right? That's the only thing. It's zero touch. You don't have to do any configuration as such on the AP because as it comes up, you know, what, what happens is, um, you know, it'll, it'll do the DHCP um, query, right? So everything is taken care of. I'll again go through that process again, but you know, I am just quickly covering up everything which is needed for the lab. Cool. Let's go back here. So what we did, we talked about um, the, we talked about the switch. We talked about access point. We talked about the compatibility matrix and stuff. Now let's look at our data center, right? So let's go one by one. Let's go to the WLC again, right? Let's look at a little bit from the WLC side. So where is my WLC? It's over here. Yeah. So like I was saying, um, you know, I'm not going to take you through every single configuration WLC because this is something, you know, this is not a wireless video as such, but some basic things which you've got to know is uh, obviously having a management IP for your WLC. Um, if you want, you can also use a system, basically, you know, uh, put in a DNS name as well, not mandatory. 
Um, so apart from that, you this is a very quick view to understand, you know, how are, are your APs working, right? So you can see in my case, uh, looks like, um, you know, I have the AX radios and I mean, this is mainly for your five gigahertz and the second one is mainly for your 2.4, right? So if you can see, um, all my uh, radios are working fine. I mean, at least I am using the dual dual band radio, so you can see total two and up is two. So I'm just concerned with this. If you are using different APs, you know, uh, just make sure your radios are up because without that, you know, obviously the SSIDs will not be visible. Uh, that being said, what else? So let's go to the WLAN section, right? What is WLAN? This is literally the place where you define your SSIDs, right? In my network, in my lab, we are going to have two SSIDs. One is called the you know, it's basically the corporate SSID and the other one is the uh, guest SSID, right? So we're going to click on the corporate SSID here and um, we'll see some configurations, right? If you want to kind of replicate the same thing, right? You can give any name to your SSID, right? I'm just giving it as Mango Lab Corp. Um, and the things very important is the interface, right? This one. So you can see the interface. Probably let's open one more tab here so that I'll show you where you define that interface, right? So. Uh, let's for that you'll have to go down to uh, sorry yeah, let's go down to controller go down to interfaces right so this is the place where you define you can go and click on new and this is the place where you define the various uh, vlans right uh, where you want that uh, various vlans for that ssid right in my case uh, we have like i said two important uh, interfaces have to be defined right one is your um, vlan 1030 which is your you know corporate ssid and the other one is a guest one so that's 1070 right and you define the uh, uh, 1030 as the um, you know vlan identifier 1070 as the vlan identifier for the guest and the ip addresses as well right looks like this is getting uh, using dhcp again these are these interfaces as well you can even define a static ip as well right you can see this will match with whatever i showed you with the uh, switch earlier let's go back to the switch uh, you can see the switch here. It is 10, 10, 30.1 and 10, 10, 70.1, right? So that's the subnet. So if you go back to uh, this guy over here, let's go back to, yeah, see, 10, 10, 30.2, 10, 10, 70. So that's the same subnet um, from where, you know, the guest, uh, the, the, the corporate uh, VLAN and the guest VLAN is sourced from, right? So the, that's where you define the interfaces. And once you define the interfaces, you come back to the w, uh, WLAN settings and you, in the drop down you select the interface, right? You are basically telling, look, um, and uh, this this particular wireless network is locally switched, which means all the traffic, right? The access point is literally dummy, right? It won't do anything. It won't do any packet switching. All the all the all the data or all the uh, packets are basically sent via a cap app tunnel to where to your uh, WLC and WLC is the guy who is going to switch it for you, right? So. We are basically telling, look, when you get a packet um, uh, from the SSID lab corp, send it on the VLAN 1030, right? That's what we are doing. Uh, security is very important, right? Uh, we, are, we are using WPA, right? WPA2, in fact, enterprise edition, right? Not the personal edition. We are using enterprise uh, because dot one x is what we want to try, right? This is literally wireless dot one x, right? So enterprise WPA2. Uh, nothing complicated apart from this, right? Pretty straightforward. Enable dot one x obviously here, right? And uh, let's go to layer three, right? There is nothing again. Triple A servers. You need to obviously set up your ICE, right? Provides the ICE IP address. This is my ICE ten twenty sixty dot eight. That's my ICE IP, right? So that's what you set up. And the port obviously for radius, right? So the authentication, you know, WLC is acting as a NAD here, right? Uh, I think that was pretty clear, right? Uh, just like in your wired authentication, your switch is acting as a NAD. In case of wireless, your WLC is acting as a NAD, right? So all the authentication requests are proxied and sent to your ICE. And on the ICE, ICE is the place where we are actually doing the um, authentication. Cool? All right. Next. So we are done with that. There is nothing in QS and policies and uh, in advanced as well. I don't remember doing any settings. So all of this is pretty default, right? So that was about one of the while, um, WLAN. The same thing goes into the other um, WLAN, which is the guest one. Only difference is, you see here, the VLAN is different. It is 1070, right? Uh, also, remember to broadcast SSID, right, in both the, both the cases. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. All right, so that's mainly it. Apart from that, what should you know? So that was about the WLAN section. Um, in the um, controller sections, uh, there's nothing else which I can think of, right? Pretty 
straightforward what i showed you the interfaces which was the most important part the rest is all uh, straightforward stuff uh, let's go to the while well, exception this is where you can see your ap so this is my ap this is like my ap has received an ip address right it's because it is using dhcp right so uh, the ap basically when it comes up uh, what what we have done basically here is uh, uh, we are using option 43 right so option 43 is a, a very interesting way of uh, uh, instead of static status uh, you know statically defining uh, the wlc ip to the ap what we can do is when the ap comes up right using option 43 we can somehow get, tell the ap that look this is your wlc right so that has been defined in the dhcp server side and as a result you know the um, ap is able to come and register to the wlc and get an ip and everything right so that's uh, again like i said this is very uh, basic uh, wlc uh, sorry wireless stuff which i'm not going to uh, you know double click much here but that's good uh, anything on the security side yeah uh, here we would probably have to think about uh, uh, what is this the ACLs where are the ACLs yeah ACLs that's important right so <clears throat> uh, ACLs are very important right because like I said the, your WLC is the guy who is going to switch the traffic right if you look at my topology here so you know all the traffic from this um, you know um, clients are basically gonna be you know using a cap wrap tunnel it is when we proxy it up to the wlc and wlc is the one who is then going to you know send the traffic to the required destination so you know <clears throat> the access list everything access control qs everything should be happening on the wlc so that's why you can see here um, you know we we will need to put some kind of an access control and that's why we have a bunch of you know acls right <clears throat> and these acls um, um, uh, pretty again straightforward right you have a permit all traffic this is obviously from the look of it obviously you understand that this is for your corporate uh, ssid whereas there is a reauthor uh, you know redirection um, you know acl which i will again touch upon when we do the guest part uh, and then there is a guest acl as well which again you know we will talk about when we do the guest part right apart from that um, you know this is a straightforward stuff you know you all your acls are basically defined here on the wlc side uh, and that's it. I mean, the management section is not very relevant to our discussion. So that's about your WLC part, right? Uh, so once we are done with the WLC, let's go back here, right? So we are done with the WLC. Um, let's then now go to the ICE part, right? The ICE, the most important guy. Where is my ICE? So again, let's go back here and let's come here. So I believe I have my ICE here. Yeah, there you go. So there's my ICE. Um, on the ICE side, the first thing you would do is go down to administration network devices right let's see if the wlc has been added okay there you go right we have the wlc let's click on this guy and you can see the wlc is here the ip address is here right the same ip which i showed you earlier 10 20 60 or 33 um, and we have enabled ra radius obviously right because like i showed you over there right the triple a servers so the same secret should be mentioned over there as well right otherwise it won't work okay uh, COA is important, right? COA is here. You can see the COA, but you don't have to enable it. I think it's enabled by default, so that's good. TACAX is basically for authentication into the WLC, which is not very relevant, not mandatory. And SNMP is also not mandatory, right? The only mandatory configuration here is the radius part, right? Because we are using .1x. Cool? That's good. Apart from that, what else? So for the next part, what we will do is we will try to ch check if our... Uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> SSID, corporate SSID is working. We'll try to connect to it. We'll see if it is working. And then we will, see, you know, trace the whole policies which are being used for that, right? So for that, let's again go back to our browser where I have my client. So what we are doing is we are connecting to this guy, this blue, you know, uh, client right now. So we'll go to that blue client, which is over here, right? Um, so let's go here. Okay, so this is my client, right? Uh, is uh, think of this guy as an employee as an employee of that corporate company right and he wants to connect to this particular network right to the corporate network of this um, which, whichever we have you know set up right so what do, what will he do he'll go to his inter, uh, Wi-Fi section right wireless section so you're gonna click here and you can see both the SSIDs are visible right we have set up two SSIDs one is your mango lab uh, corp and the other one is the guest one so both the SSIDs are uh, visible so what he's going to do is gonna obviously click on the uh, uh, wireless one obviously right so uh, let's click on wireless before that let's also before we actually click let's what we'll do is let's also keep the 
let's go to uh, our uh, eyes let's open the operations right uh, let's go to the you know section let's go to the uh, uh, live log section and let's keep this ready right because it will be useful for us to see the logs you see the last log which has come is from mango bob right so let's see what is going to happen when this particular user is going to connect to the network so let's come back here yeah so i'm going to say connect right so obviously when i say connect it's going to ask for username and password right where is that yeah there you go so in my case we are using a domain user right which means i can say use my windows user account right why because you know this particular domain user you know has been defined on the active directory right this is my active directory um, you have seen me you know deploy active directory in my previous lab as well right um, actually i've used active directory at so many places in the whole you know on my channel so you can anytime go and check how to set up active directory how to use it and all of that but uh, this is what we have done right if you uh, this is our active directory domain right so we have the mango.local and in that you know we have um, uh, you know all the computers right this is mainly for your wired whereas your corporate network right we have defined some users right and you can see the user with which we are connecting right now is eric so if you double click on this guy you will see that this guy is a member of mango.local right so this this is a domain user this is one of the domain user of this particular network right so we'll come back here and we're going to say yes go and use eric's credentials right we're going to click okay and we're going to say connect right so now it's trying to connect to the domain user so let's wait let's wait for a couple of seconds ah that didn't work or did it let's try once again okay there you go so second time the charm so there you go it's connected right pretty cool now we'll see what has happened let's go and see if this guy got an ip address right so let's go to the command prompt ip config there you go so it's got an ip address which is in the same you know subnet range which i showed you earlier right 10.10.30.150 70 is your guest right for your uh, corporate uh, wireless vlan it is 10 10 30 150 so we are on the right track right so we have received the correct ip what we can do next is let's investigate what has happened from the ice side right there you go right ah you see a bunch of cool things right see this was our first uh, you know uh, this thing which did not go through so that's why you see there's a red mark here but it finally went in right now if you scroll a little bit to the right hand side we will get a much more idea about what is happening here you can see it's a it has profiled the endpoint which is a windows 10 machine which is correct um, but uh, the important stuff is this what is the authentication policy which has, which it has used right you can see the authentication policy which it has used is this one wired wireless heat chaining and we look at that in a minute and let's go to the right let's see if there is anything else we want to understand out of this one uh, nothing pretty much and the authorization policy as well you can see the authorization policy it is heat wireless right that's the one so where do we find these guys right let's go here let's go to the policies let's go to policy sets these are all the policies right again very similar to what we did on the wired side nothing different not, nothing different at all right these are all the policies only difference is we have a little more policies here right that's it uh, so what was the policy which kind of uh, matched it was the first one right and why did this match if you see here the conditions we are using the conditions which says you know this is actually a combined policy for both wired and wireless right so forget about this wired for now right because we are really not doing wired right we could actually do wired but we are not doing it right now for this particular client we are doing wireless so what is going to match this is going to match right so let's actually click on this small arrow mark here on the right side so that we get more insights into this particular policy so you can always edit this right you you, you probably know that by now by checking on my previous ice videos right you can click on this pencil mark and you can change the um, you know uh, authentication conditions right you can change all of this uh, you can drag and drop and or add new as well but currently what we are using is we are using we are telling that look if we are getting an authentication request from wireless.1x right uh, um, and from a particular ssid which is the mango lab corp right then it is going to match this do you want to you currently to exit without saying click ok so yeah I don't want to save anything good so we are basically matching the wireless.1x and the ssid right and as soon as it matches click on this first arrow mark which is the authentication policy right let's click on that and you see here what is happening is it is checking if the user right 
is actually part of a identity store right here you can see the identity store is we have used two identity stores one is internal and the other one is the mango corporate right in in short what we have done is we have integrated this ice with our mango ad right we'll, uh, let me show you that as well that's where you do that uh, if you go to identities click on this in a new tab probably Again, all of this I've already done in my wired section, so I'm not spending more time here, right? Uh, just showing you quickly. So if you go to external, uh, sorry, I think I clicked something else. Yeah, if you go to external identity sources here, right? You can see uh, there is something called Mango AD here, right? And uh, there you go, right? It's operational. So we have connected our uh, um, we have connected our ICE node to the um, Active Directory, right? Which I earlier showed you over here, right? In my other browser. And you can see it's operational right so because of that you know what is happening is this authentication is passing right because we have actually authenticated with a valid user who is Eric right who is part of a company now once that authentication has succeeded what is going to happen is the authorization is going to kick in now if you see if earlier if you remember from the log right if you remember from the log do we have the log at not probably I closed that window but if you remember the log the log which basically said that the authorization policy which matched was keep wireless over here and why so because obviously the authentication uh, um, the author authentication um, uh, you know protocol which matched was peep right and the user was actually part of the mango directory right the active directory so that's why you know this particular authorization rule is going to match so what is the authorization rule it basically provides or this is the authorization profile which is going to be attached to that particular user Right, and what is this or to that session mainly and you can see we can dig deeper into what this is this is corporate asset wireless so where do you find that let's go back to um, policy elements and results right let's go to author authorization profiles my bad and here you will basically find that which is corporate asset wireless right if you click on that you basically get right you can see the access type it is permitting it is access and if you scroll down to the complete bottom we get a clear view of what is happening you can see all the traffic is permitted because this is a valid user of the corporate company right and we can validate as well right if you go down here so this guy has gotten access i think if you go to uh, the browser if you go to his browser we should be able to yeah so there is a small link here to access internal resource of this company which is in a um, ftp right so i can do an ftp and there you go right i can access it but I'll not be able to do this when I authenticate using guest, right? If I connect to the guest SSID, you know, the guest SSID has just internet access. As a result, the guest will not be able to do this, right? So that's the um, um, corporate SSID. So now let's switch um, our attention to the second one, which is the guest SSID, right? All right. So for the guest, where do we go for guest? So let's go back here. Um, so this this is my um, uh, this is obviously the PC of um, employee of the company right um, and that's why you know he was able to access it. So let's go to another PC which I have here right again this is a v VM with with a wireless adapter connected to it right so we can test out the guest access as well using this right so what we're gonna do is again let's do the same process let's connect the SSID let's go back and quickly check if our ice is all right. Let's go to the ice. Let's keep this, um, you know, window open here, right? There you go. So let me close this other stuff, which is not really needed. There it goes. Yeah. So we have this one. You can see the last um, user who got authenticated was Eric, right? Let's keep this in mind because now what we are going to do is let's go back to yeah. Let's go to the guest machine, right? So to guest, what we do is let's go to guest here. Right? This is the SSID of the guest. So I'm going to say go and connect. Let's see what's going to happen. So, for guest SSID, right? Um, we have uh, used obviously. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. For for the guest SSID, what we normally do is we use we don't use dot one x obviously, right? Because obviously this particular whoever is visiting your campus, whoever is visiting your company or enterprise, they are not part of your company, right? So they would not have accounts uh, in your Active Directory, right? We can actually check that by going to the um, uh, let's go to my give me a second yeah so if you go to your wlans okay, let's go to the wlan here let's click on two here because that's the guest one if you go to security 
and if you see here it is personal right there is, we have not selected enterprise here it's personal correct and the, when it is personal we have to define a uh, password here so that's what we have defined right uh, the wpa password is and i know the password so i'm going to use that password to kind of connect to this guest id guest ssh id right so let's use the password sweet looks good and i'm going to say next so i'm going to say yes so i'm connecting yeah there you go so looks like it is trying to connect and it is trying to do some redirection ah there you go so i've gotten some guest access portal cool but before proceeding let's do the same exercise let's go to eyes where is my eyes yeah there you go right see here what has happened i have received a new entry uh, for this particular pc and looks like this is the mac address of that particular pc right we can confirm as well let's confirm right uh, just so that you know we know that we are doing the right thing so let's go to ip config Ah, uh, sorry. I think it's uh, did I use the forward slash? I think yeah, I did. Okay. Sorry. Let's there you go. Okay, so that should give me the um, a MAC address of, and you see the MAC address here starts with D zero ends with fifty eight, right? And that's exactly what we saw over uh, there as well, right? There you go. Starts with D zero. So that's the exact client which just now came in right but what do we see here we see something different right let's scroll to the right hand side see the difference in policy which got kicked in for the employee for the corporate user you see this was the policy right but for our guest user you see this policy kicked in this authentication policy it's wired man right and then it went to default uh, the authorization policy also uh, i mean the authorization has not even happened yet right because that's why you see uh, it's it's in nothing has changed here, right? It's still the same. Um, and what has happened on the right hand side? Let's free. Yeah, there you go. The authorization policy is this one. This is what is. Let's see. Okay. Can I pull this a bit? Yeah. So this is the authorization profile which has kicked in, which is called guest redirect. Okay. Now let's explore all these guys, right? So let's go to again our policy sets. Let's open this in a new tab. Coming up and it's a bit slow. Okay, there you go. So the wireless map. So this was the authentication policy, the third row which kicked in, right? Let's let's you know, try to understand what happened here. So it was obviously a wireless map, right? The condition is correct um, because you know this particular user is not part of the uh, AD, right? Obviously nothing else uh, matches, right? Above this, so if you go back here. Obviously, step number one will not match because it was not part of the SSID Mango Lab Corp. Step number two will not match because it was not um, uh, wired map. So obviously, the only thing which can match is the wireless map, and the SSID which it belongs to is the guest one, right? So let's click on that. Let's look at the authentication policy though, right? So the authentication policy is very interesting here. If you see the authentication policy, we are telling that look for this particular MAC address in the internal store or in the Mango Corporate. Right, but the funny thing is, this MAC address will not be that at either of the place. So, what is going to happen? Are we going to drop this session? Are we going to drop this user? No, we are not going to drop it. See here, we have a special option which is set. If user not found, continue. Right. So, this is this is a very key point when you are doing guest access. Right. We really need to make sure that we don't drop the request or reject it. Rather, if the user is not present, we are going to continue. Right. If the authentication fails. Obviously, go for a drop, but in this case, the user itself is not uh, present, so we're going to say continue. Use the continue drop down. And after that, what authorization policy did we kick in? So let's look at the authorization. There are two authorization, I mean, uh, policies here, right, which have been added. One is called the default, and other one is the guest access, right? And currently, if you remember from that uh, log, I think it is still here, right? You see the one which authorization profile which kicked in was. Or the policy which kicked in was default. Default kicked in, and as a result, authorization redirect profile was assigned. So let's go back here and check. So the this is the default one, right? And the profile was guest redirect. Now let's look at what this guest redirect is. Let's again go back to probably results. So the guest redirect is very important, right? Because uh, what we are trying to do is 
let's look at that ACL to begin with, right? We are basically tracing back the whole journey to understand what is happening, right? So if you go to authorization profile, you will basically find, uh, you know, uh, authorization profile called guest redirect, right? And if you scroll to the complete bottom, you'll get to see what this guy is trying to do or using this particular profile. You can see here, you're accepting the session, right? But at the same time, you are, you are sending or you're returning uh, uh, ACL, right? So ACL called as ACL WebAuth redirect, right? And you're also redirecting the session to a particular URL. There you go, right? So this is a URL. And this is exactly the URL which we just now got hit, right? You see this URL, right? Which we saw in the, uh, here, so this one, right? This URL, oh, sorry, here, right? Guest internet. So this is a URL which we just now hit, right? Looks like it got timed out, but that's okay. Um, but that's the URL which we got hit, right? So this is very, this is exactly we are, which we have discussed earlier as well in the guest uh, of wired uh, uh, section as well. What we do in guest access is we don't want to obviously give access to the user blindly. We want to, you know, uh, I mean, there are different ways to do it again. You can do it using a hotspot portal. You can do it using a, uh, you know, self uh, registered, you know, uh, internet access. What we are doing here is more of a self registration plus, you know, the sponsor has to approve it kind of process, right? So what I mean by that is let's go back here. So now the user has been redirected to this URL, right? Before that, there's one more thing which I want to, you know, quickly uh, comment off before we forget it, right? So let's go back here. We were tracing, let's, where is my, yeah. So we were tracing this, right? We saw this ACL, right? You might ask, okay, where is this ACL defined, right? This ACL is defined on the WLC. So let's go back to the WLC and let's go to security. And uh, under ACL, I showed you this earlier. I told you that we will come back to this when we talk about guest and there you go, right? ACL web auth redirect. Let's look at this ACL. Generally in this ACL, the section which is of very interest for you is the deny section, right? So let's observe the deny section here, right? The permit section is your permitting, uh, you know, uh, traffic to the DHCP so that you get some IP address, right? Because the client has to talk to the DNS, DHCP, so all of that is permit. But what is of interest to you is the deny section. So there are four lines of deny section here, right? And you can see the deny section is basically denying any traffic to HTTP, right? Any HTTP and HTTPS traffic. You can see here in these four lines, right? So that's exactly what we are trying to do. We are telling that, look, if you are, uh, if you are a guest, you're connecting to my network, right? What we are doing is any traffic which comes to from your client, we are going to match it using this ACL, right? And generally what people do is people, as soon as they connect to the internet, right? As soon as they connect to SSID, they open a browser to try to browse something, right? So when they do that, these lines match, right? In the redirect ACL, which is defined on the WLC, right? So it will match this ACL and the traffic will be redirected to what? It will be redirected to that redirect URL, which was provided by ICE, right? The redirect URL, which I just now showed you over here, this one, right? It gets redirected over that, right? So that's very important. So now what we'll do is let's retry this. Hope it's, let's retry. I hope the session is not, okay. So there you go. So we have this, but we really don't have a username password. So what we'll do is we'll click on don't have a username password. So this is, uh, uh, this is exactly what we did in the spa, in the previous videos, right, in the guest access. So we are going to create a user, right? So we create a user called, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, a new user. Let's call this guy as uh, Tommy, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe last name is something like T. Uh, email address, so I'm going to say Tommy at uh, xyz.com, doesn't matter, right, the email address. I mean, technically the email address matters because, you know, the username password is kind of emailed to you, but then in my case, I don't really have a exchange server for this user, so I'm gonna just go with this, that's fine. There's a company name, I'm gonna say just XYZ, doesn't really matter. The person you're visiting, so this is important, right? So remember, we have already authenticated a user who is part of this company, who is Eric, right? So we are gonna put his email ID. We're gonna say Eric at, right, Eric at mango dot local. So that's the email ID of the employee of a company, right? So this is the sponsor, right? We have talked about this before. Uh, you can go and check my previous guest access videos where we have talked in detail about what is a sponsor and all of that. So we're going to put the 
email id of the sponsor and the reason for the visit i don't know maybe visiting a friend right can be anything right and there you go i'm gonna say register awesome so now looks like it has registered so what is going to happen is our eric will basically get an email so let's go to eric's email box right so there you go that's eric so let's click on eric and let's sign into eric's email box and uh, don't update yeah and you see we have received an email right and it's a guest approval email right we have, it's basically telling that look let's probably pull this a bit on the left it's basically telling that look there is a guest who wants to visit and he has put you as the sponsor would you want to approve it so i'm going to say yeah go ahead approve he's my friend right so here for approving i'll obviously need uh, uh, my credentials i'm going to say eric and uh, what is my credentials i know my credentials i'm not going to tell it to you but let's see if this works ah oh, that didn't work let's try again yeah so there you go that works uh, and you can see Tommy has been approved right now normally Tommy would have received an email now with the whole his username and password but since we don't have an exchange server for him so what we'll do is we'll again log into the sponsor portal and we'll look at the um, password right so let's go sponsor yeah sorry or we could probably do that from uh, probably from my jump post as well I think I already have the URL saved over there so it's better to do it from there uh, not here yet okay so let's go to sponsor right so I'm gonna again log in with my Eric right yeah it's Eric okay and uh, the password is gonna be save yeah there you go so uh, and you can see here there is called something called as manage account right again how to set up the guest portal and all of that we have already covered right um, but if you really want to me to just touch base on it we can quickly go through it so under the administ under the sorry work centers you have a complete uh, workflow for guest access here click on that and it clearly goes through everything you need to do to set up the guest access but the main thing which we are interested in is the portal so if you go to the portals and components you can see uh, the um, uh, guest portal which has been set up here right so the mango self sign portal and the um, self-registered guest portal right again this is very much clearly explained in my previous video i'm not going to again spend more time on this that's why i said the configuration of this session is too big so i did not want to do all of that on the video rather take you through it that way you know we can concentrate more on the theory and more understanding the concept right coming back to the sponsor portal so i have logged in as eric and you can see uh, the user has been uh, is basically seen here and there you go the password is available here right this is my username which is tommy at xyz.com and the password is 969564 cool so let's go back and try that now right so let's try here we are on the guest machine so i'm gonna say tommy right type that out okay tommy at xyz.com and the password is i forgot was it 93 something let's check that again it was 9564 okay let's do that again 95 nine, five, and 4 okay i'm gonna say sign on ah there you go so looks like it has authenticated me i'm gonna say don't save scroll down let's accept this uh, aup right it's like a acceptable use policy which will say do this do that don't do that and all of that so i'm gonna say accept it and within few seconds we should be authenticated right so it is trying to authenticate you can see there is a small yellow mark which is still saying no internet but this should quickly in another few seconds there you go right it got connected now we have internet access we can check that out we can say you know google.com and we should be we should have internet access right let's wait for a second now ah, there you go right so google came up but we will not have access to the internal network which is the ftp you know ftp server which is internal right that one will not have or we can just open it in a new tab as well there you go that will keep on buffering we will not have because this guy is not a actual you know employee of the company so he will basically have only the internet access and that's the that's the reason why we have put it in a separate vlan right cool so that's good final touch up is let's go and look at the eyes right let's go to the eyes see there you go uh, we had we had worked or we have worked our way till where till uh, to the ref yeah 
we had worked our way till here, I believe, right? Till before Tommy, okay, till here, right? Till this line. But now that Tommy has come, you can see what has happened, right? Looks like we got a blue uh, session here, which means the session has been initiated. Everything looks green, because, which means authentication has passed. Let's scroll to the right hand side to see what has happened. The authentication policy still shows wired map, which is correct. Um, and there you go, the authorization policy, earlier it was going for default, now it is going for guest access, right? That's the difference. And uh, the authorization rule, authorization, uh, uh, this thing, uh, the authorization profile has changed from guest redirect to guest access, right? We can quickly have a look at that. So let's go to our uh, is the policies. Maybe we can just go from here, right? So if you go to policy sets again, we are interested in this wireless map. So let's go here. We, we looked at the, all of that stuff. We had, look, we had looked at the default earlier. We looked at how the default authorization policy was getting kicked in. But now what has happened is once the user, you know, uh, was registered, once the user registered and was approved by a sponsor, right? What happens is that user's MAC address will be added to a internal identity group called as guest endpoints, right? And when this rule matches, you see, we get the guest access authentication profile, authorization profile, right? What is this guest endpoints? We can go and quickly have a look. We'll go to identity groups. Right? So that is already configured on the uh, portal, right? So whenever the um, sponsor approves it, right, we, we did the very same process even in our wired uh, access as well, right? You can double check that. But uh, to keep it short, whenever the sponsor approves it, that particular MAC address will be added here. See, there you go. D0, starting with D0, ending with 58. So that MAC address is added to the guest endpoint. And now that that MAC address is available here, uh, you know, the policy which is going to be hit is different, right? And as a result, we are basically gonna get the guest access. Um, and, uh, you know, we can actually look at what guest access is, right? So this is guest access. The authorization profile is guest access, but what do you, where do you see that? We'll go to um, uh, policy elements. Let's click on authorization profiles here. Let's click on guest access, there you go, right? This is the guest access. Let's scroll to the complete bottom. You can see the ACL now, which is going to be applied is called as guest. Earlier it was ACL re uh, redirect ACL, right? Um, uh, it was the web auth redirection. Now it is the guest ACL. Again, this ACL has to be compulsorily defined on your WLC because all the switching of the traffic happens on the WLC, right? So we will go and check that as well here. Uh, where is that? So this is the ACLs. Let's go back to the ACLs. There you go, right? So we have the guest ACL. And the guest ACL will obviously, um, you know, deny uh, deny any traffic to the internal network. So that's why you see any traffic to the 10 network, 170 to 16 and 190 to 198, right? So these are the private networks. Traffic to any of these private networks is denied and traffic to the internet is allowed, right? So that's what you define over there, right? So that was the complete uh, idea guys behind this video. Uh, hope uh, that was kind of a bit useful because people have been asking me, you know, can you do something a little bit on wireless and ice? So I thought this would be a good example to show how you can spin up the whole, you know, you can deploy, uh, you know, uh, wireless SSIDs. You can, um, you know, do the whole authentication using ice um, in collaboration with your AD, obviously, um, and kind of bring this up so quickly right um, again feel free to try this out even on evng right it should technically work you will probably need uh, uh, to figure out uh, the how to create this wireless clients right and also uh, th there are there are different i've seen people on the internet doing it right uh, um, uh, doing a bit of pca pass through and all of that but it might be a bit complicated to do it on eve technically possible yes uh, a simplest way is if you have access to a physical gear right like this so it becomes much simpler um, to to demonstrate and to check out the whole how wireless works with eyes and um, you know how easy it is to build it right cool hope that was useful guys and uh, thanks for watching have a good one bye